Two unidentified males and two unidentified females have succumbed to injuries received in a motor vehicle accident on the PJ Patterson Highway earlier today. The vehicle appeared to have been swerving along the road based on the evidence. Uh, it collided in the rear of a medium truck and then it overturned. We are able to confirm that four persons have died. Uh, there are a number of persons that have been taken to the Spanish Town Hospital. And um, we have heard that a few of them are critical. Jamaica on Sunday recorded four additional COVID-19 fatalities, increasing the tally to 676 with 263 new cases. More than 1,000 persons received the first of two doses of the AstraZeneca coronavirus COVID-19 vaccine on Saturday at a vaccination blitz held at the Montego Bay Convention Center in Rose Hall, St. James. To be able to say to the market that the Jamaican workers are all vaccinated is going to be a major marketing position for us because indeed after this weekend Jamaica might very well be the most vaccinated tourism worker group in the entire Caribbean. And 26-year-old Anil Berry, a laborer of Stewart Field District in St. Thomas, has been missing since Friday, April 9. Good evening. Two unidentified males and two unidentified females have succumbed to injuries received in a motor vehicle accident on the PJ Patterson Highway earlier today. Reports from the Spanish Town Police are that at about 11 a.m., a Toyota Hiace bus was traveling along the roadway when it is alleged that one of the tires blew out. The driver of the bus lost control of the vehicle and collided in a motor truck before it overturned several times and crashed into the median. Senior Superintendent of Police Gary McKenzie, in giving an update on the accident, pointed out that 11 other occupants of the bus were transported to hospital in serious condition. Based on the information we have, on our boat, 11 a.m., a Toyota motor truck was traveling along the P.J. Patterson Highway towards Spanish Town. When on reaching about 800 meters east of the exit to Spanish Town, it is apparent that the driver encountered some difficulties with the vehicle traveling at high speed. Uh, the vehicle appeared to have been swerving along the roadway based on the evidence. Uh, it collided in the rear of a medium truck and then it overturned it appears that it overturned a couple of times and then it came to rest with the front and the medium as a result of that several persons were injured uh, we are able to confirm that four persons have died uh, there are a number of persons that have been taken to the spanish town hospital and um, we have heard that a few of them are critical so we are going to do further checks on that. I am told that 11 persons are in the hospital. We are not able to see their identities. In fact, we have not identified any of them just now. And so we continue our investigations. And a further update on this story to follow in subsequent newscasts. In COVID-19 update, Jamaica on Sunday recorded four additional COVID-19 fatalities increasing the tally to 676. The deceased persons are an 83-year-old man from St. Anne, a 79-year-old man from Kingston and St. Andrew, a 98-year-old woman from St. Catherine, and a 69-year-old man from Portland. One more case has been recorded as a coincidental death, moving the tally to 104. And two other fatalities are being probed, increasing the figure to 110. Meanwhile, there were 263 new cases with ages ranging from 32 days old to 94 years old. That pushing the total to 42,763 with 22,769 being active. 
Of the new infections, 137 are women and 126 are men. Kingston and St. Andrew accounts for most of the new cases with 79, followed by St. Catherine with 44, and then St. Anne with 43. In the meantime, there were 121 more recoveries, increasing the total to 19,017. Nine persons are in government quarantine, while 28,071 are at home. The coronavirus COVID-19 field hospital, which was previously set up at the National Chest Hospital in St. Andrew, has been redeployed to the Spanish Town Hospital in St. Catherine. The field hospital was donated by the United States U.S. government through the U.S. Embassy in Jamaica. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton, who toured the relocated facility on the weekend, said that the facility is dedicated to COVID-19 patients. The chest hospital to this location at the Spanish Town Hospital. As you can see, it's, a, it's a currently equipped with 40 beds, but has the capacity to have 60 beds. It comes equipped with all the gadgets to, for connections, for power, air conditioning, and all the other support infrastructure that is required. It's not piped for gas, but we can use the portable oxygen tanks to the, to the extent that it is needed. Dr. Tufton also said that this comes at an important time as the parish is one that has been recording an increase in COVID-19 patients. This facility is going to be dedicated to COVID patients. Right now, the hospital has over 70 positive cases being treated in the hospital. It has taken up a lot of the bed space. And as you know, St. Catherine is one of the parishes, St. Catherine and its environs, that have, we have seen high positivity rates. So this facility has come in at a very important time uh, to deal with the overflow of COVID cases that we have. And I'm sure the doctors and nurses and staff here will appreciate doing what they can to provide as best as possible response to COVID in the parish. So I want to use the opportunity again to thank the U.S. government and people for the, country, for the donation. Uh, I believe we're supposed to get another one. I just need to check to see if it has arrived as yet. But as you can see, it will be very useful, very helpful in these very challenging times. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has announced that 10 vaccination blitz sites will operate until 8 p.m. today and tomorrow as it aims to get as many Jamaicans as possible inoculated with the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. In the meantime, government workers have been added to the cohort of people who can receive the vaccine. At the same time, the ministry also continues the vaccination of healthcare workers as well as members of the Jamaica Defence Force and the Jamaica Constabulary Force. The sites that will operate until 8 p.m. are in Kingston and St. Andrew, the National Arena and Mona Aging and Wellness Centre, in St. Catherine, the Twickenham Park Open Bible Church, in Clarendon, the Denby Show Ground, and in Manchester, the Manchester High School. Persons can register using the online portal on the ministry's website at www.moh.gov.jm or call the National Vaccination Hotline at 888-1LOVE, that is 888-663-5683 or register on spot at one of the Blitz sites across the island. More than 1,000 persons received the first of two doses of the AstraZeneca coronavirus COVID-19 vaccine on Saturday at a vaccination blitz held at the Montego Bay Convention Center in Rose Hall, St. James. The site is among 44 set up across the island as part of a mass vaccination exercise. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett, who joined Dr. Christopher Tufton at the Montego Bay Convention Center, said that the hospitality workers have been very responsive to the vaccination program, 
with a vast majority turning out to be inoculated. To be able to say to the market that the Jamaican workers are all vaccinated is going to be a major marketing position for us. Because indeed, after this weekend, Jamaica might very well be the most vaccinated tourism worker group in the entire Caribbean. And, and, and that's a, a major statement to be made. The second key point of all of this too is that world tourism is moving towards harmonization of policies and standardization of practices. And one of the areas of common understanding and agreement is that to vaccinate means to enhance your security. And the world is also making positions in relation to categorizing countries on the basis of vaccination. The, the UK is talking about a red light, a green light, and an amber light to determine the levels of acceptance for destinations that their people can go to. The US is struggling with the issue of vaccination passports. The UNWTO and the World Travel and Tourism Council are all, along with IATA, struggling with finding a mechanism what they call a biosanitary tool that everybody can subscribe to to enable travel to be seamless. So Jamaica will be well ahead of the game if our workers are all vaccinated. Minister Bartlett made a special appeal to the Jamaica Union of Travelers Association due to operators to come out and to get vaccinated as they play a key role in the tourism sector. The Juta and the taxi drivers and all their frontline workers in this regard. They are the ones who really commute daily with the people. And they are the means by which the largest number of people and visitors to our country move around in the country. It is important that they come out and I want to make a special appeal now to them to also to make sure that all our transportation I want to make a special appeal to, to the craft market vendors and all the small players, the street food providers and all the small and medium tourism enterprises come out and get vaccinated because you have to interface with the public. And the cruise is coming back and cruises when a lot of people walk street. So we need to make sure that our people are vaccinated so that when they come, they can feel safe, that they have a small, if any chance at all, of getting infected because Jamaicans are protected. Meanwhile, Minister of Health and Wellness, Dr. Christopher Tufton, who visited the facility to observe the vaccination process, said he is encouraged by the number of persons who came out. I want to thank the team from Public Health who are here, led by our regional director, Errol Green, and of course, uh, primary health care, Mr. Wallace, who leads the team on the ground in the communities. Um, I think the team have been doing a, a very good job in Western Jamaica, as indeed in the country. Today at this uh, lovely facility, the convention center, we have the space and the capacity to do uh, well over a thousand per day. I think we're on target for that thousand plus. I'm told we have done up nearly 700 already. Uh, we would like to do the same thing tomorrow and the day after, encouraging persons to come out and to take advantage of this opportunity to get vaccinated. And uh, as uh, Minister Bartlett said, the aim of the program clearly is to protect Jamaicans from all walks of life. And in this instance, we're doing the over 60s, but also very importantly, in anticipation of economic recovery and the critical sectors sectors that drive economic activity, create jobs, but also sectors that are most exposed by virtue of their type of service they provide. In this instance, the hotel industry, the tourism industry, dealing with foreigners or guests. I think it's important for us to give some priority to those sectors. Just as we have said to teachers, who, because we want the face-to-face -face classroom sessions to be resumed. So all well that going on now and I want to encourage that and we will see what happens in the days to come and in the weeks to come. For his part, Western Health Authority Regional Director Errol Green 
gave an update on the day's activities in St. James and Hanover. We had registered 1,050 persons to be vaccinated today. We are on target. Um, so far we have, we have done over 700 and we still have appointments which will take us up until about four or five o'clock. So we're expecting that we'll meet the target. For the rest of the region, we are doing extremely well. In Trelawney, there's a trickle. In some community centers, they would have done less than 10, um, but the staff has been there prepared, ready and waiting to, to do the vaccinations. In Hanover, it's not as well as we would have expected. Um, the number, the turnout in, in Hanover was not quite what we expected, but the team is there waiting for those persons in their respective categories to come and they'll be accommodated. They'll be there until five this evening. In uh, Westmoreland, we have seen quite a bit of a hustle in Westmoreland. Negril, we, had, we were in a catering for Negril yesterday, but the turnout in Negril was overwhelming and we had to put a team in Negril. So we've been seeing very active um, operations in Negril, in Savlamar, and in other areas of Westmoreland. And a resident in the parish of St. James that got his COVID-19 vaccine on Saturday encourages others to get the jab. It's good. I have no problem with it. Everything works okay. I, I think everybody should come out and take it because I think it is better to have, uh, it, it's better to be ill from the vaccine than from COVID. Over in Hanover, residents were seen waiting to take the vaccine at the Lucy Anglican Church. Our news team spoke with the medical officer of health for the parish, Dr. Kushal Sam, who pointed out that they had a low turnout. Actually, I have, we have been expecting today to inoculate more than 750 persons. And, uh, but unfortunately, what is happening that it is quite slow up till now. Uh, we are operating from three sites today. One is at here, Anglican Church, Paris Anglican Church. Another is at Lucy Health Center. Third is Noel Home Hospitals. So Lucy Health Center is uh, already, we, we had 82 here in the Paris Anglican Church right, up till now. And uh, 36 uh, uh, at uh, Lucy Health Center. Noel Home Hospital site has less. It is less than 10 up till now. But I'm hoping that when the day progress, more people will be turned out. But this is very, it is not, but we can say that we are expecting more people to turn, come out and get the vaccine. Little bit, dis, not discouraging, but I, I can say that we've, we are putting a lot of effort here and we want to get it su succeeded. Uh, Thing is that uh, if people has any doubt, they can come to our health facility, speak to our healthcare workers, and get it cleared up. Uh, but make sure that they take the vaccine. And Dr. Singh pointed out that those who got vaccinated can be role models in his efforts to encourage others to do the same. They, some of them, came and took the vaccine, and I think that is encouraging. And those people can be a role model for our community. They can go into the community, speak to the people and tell them, yes, come, and how they feel now. I took vaccine for myself. And after taking vaccine, certainly uh, I feel more confident while I'm talking to the person because uh, I think, okay, I have an extra layer of security apart from my mask and apart from my social distancing. So we have a third layer of security. You need to listen to the people who took it in your community and come, come forward. And believe me, for us in Hanover, our 258 healthcare workers already took taken it. JCF people took it. They are quite, not, nothing happened to them. Whatever they, those are the reaction and all those things they are uh, talking about in social media and all those things and they are fearful it's quite rare and it's evolving very rare and not very conclusive at this time so I will urge people to come forward and get the vaccine schedules are posted in different social media platform they can call 
uh, health center, they can speak to your, their CHAs in the community and find out. We are giving vaccination on our weekdays from six health centers. 83 years old Hilda Reynolds and 73 years old Reverend John Jarrett implored residents of the parish to come out and take their vaccine. I feel uh, all right. I don't know for later what may happen, but I know I feel all right. There is lots of people say they're not taking it. They're not taking the injection, but what I would say I would encourage them to, to take it because we don't know what can happen later. Some have it and some don't have it. So I thought more or less, lots of people should come and have this injection and see the outcome because it's a lots of work in it. When I came up here and see the lots of people and other expresses, I say more or less, the minister is doing a good job. It's a hard work, this. It's hard work, I can tell you. I would encourage everyone to take the vaccine because one just don't know when and if ever you would be in, in, infested with the disease. However, a lot of people are withdrawing from it because they claim that there is some after effect like brain damage later on, uh, some feeling of, um, they're not sure which of the vaccines are good. This thing is killing people. And it's time we wake up to the knowledge of it that it's not an easy thing to know you can get help and refuse to take help. You're only hurting yourself and nobody else. Whenever the availability is in your ear, just take it. Secure yourself from this COVID-19. Tourism stakeholders are appealing for a strong take-up of the COVID-19 vaccine among workers and operators in the resilient corridors. Chairman of the Tourism Resilient Corridors Committee, John Biles, said that the move will propel Jamaica to the front of the line as a nation that is taking the vaccination exercise very seriously. Hospitality workers have been included among the categories of persons to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. President of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, JHTA, Clifton Reader, who joined several players in the industry at a press conference at the Pier 1 restaurant in Montego Bay on Saturday, shortly after they received the first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine, welcomed the move by the government to prioritize the tourist sector. He said that the vaccination exercise is particularly important as the country's main source market. The United States is urging its citizens to only travel to COVID-19 vaccination, vaccinated rather nations. He noted that the resilient corridors have been working almost to perfection and having employees and management fully vaccinated will provide the perfect narrative for Jamaica as a premier tourist destination. Jamaican health officials are seeking to calm anxiety about the AstraZeneca vaccines following the revelation that the current batch expires Tuesday. The batch of 75,000 doses last week arrived in Jamaica as a gift through the African Medical Supplies Platform and the Health Ministry has been using an island-wide blitz in the push to administer as much as possible by tomorrow. The health officials note that the potency of the vaccine remains even after the shelf life ends. And so far, around 30,000 doses of the vaccines have been administered, said Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa mckenzie And she said the plan is to inoculate another 30,000 people by Tuesday. This would surpass the initial target of 54,000 people. An Ananda Alert has been activated for 14-year-old Carla Richardson of Faith Avenue, Duan Vale in Trelawney, who has been missing since April 9. She's of dark complexion, slim build, and is about 5 feet 5 inches tall. Reports from the Clarkstown Police are that Carla was last seen at home about 12 p.m. Her mode of dress is unknown. 
All efforts to locate her have proven futile. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Carla Richardson is being asked to contact the Clarkstown Police at 876-954-1080, Police 119 Emergency Number, or the nearest police station. 26-year-old Anil Berry, a laborer of Stewart Field District in St. Thomas, has been missing since Friday, April 9. He is of dark complexion, slim build, and is about 5 feet 6 inches tall. Reports from the Seaforth Police are that Berry was last seen at his home. His mode of dress at the time is unknown. All efforts to locate him have so far been unsuccessful. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Anil Berry is being asked to contact the Seaforth Police at 876-982-4280, the Police 119 emergency number, or the nearest police station. Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport Olivia Grange says an investigation has been launched into a video which has been making the rounds on social media showing a violent confrontation between a man and a woman which allegedly involves a member of parliament. In a release yesterday, the minister condemned the video, noting that discussions were held with the Minister of National Security, Dr. Horace Chang, and the police were asked to investigate the matter. Minister Grange said that the government is firmly against acts of violence. In the video, which was reportedly captured by a surveillance camera, the man is seen alighting from a bus after which he walks over to the woman and proceeded to hit her in the face. And the opposition spokesperson on justice and gender affairs, Senator Donna Scott Motley, is calling on the Jamaica Constabulary Force to bring all resources at its disposal to immediately investigate the Member of Parliament, who is identified as Central Westmoreland MP George Wright. He was allegedly captured in the April 6 video, which, re which the recording repeatedly showed him striking an unidentified woman. Senator Scott Motley shared that over the last few months, we have experienced an increase in violence against women and numerous accounts of missing women. She said this incident provides the JCF with an opportunity to demonstrate how seriously they take this issue and that they are prioritizing the safety of our Jamaican women. Senator Scott Motley believes that political leaders have an important role to play in stamping out the scourge of violence which has been plaguing our nation and must therefore be beyond reproach. And those are some of the stories making news. We will return with other stories with the UWI Seismic Research Center and the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, confirming that there was a large explosion at the La Soufrière volcano at approximately 4.15 a.m. today in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But first, let's take a break and then join Christopher Scott with sports. <laughs> 